Hi everyone, uh, welcome to this week's Ideas Based Craft Along. My name is Christiana Urbano. I'm a librarian at the Public Library of Brookline. I work with our Ideas Based program. And while the library is closed for right now, we're doing a weekly Craft Along video where we learn from one of our librarians how we can use different craft supplies we probably have lying around the house to make some art or do something creative. And this week we have one of our archivists, Jess, here, and she's going to be showing us how to make found nature art. So if you're following along at home, what you will need is some kind of found nature. So you might wanna go on a walk around your neighborhood or maybe on a hike. So I have a stick and a rock. Jess will show us what she has in just a minute and then whatever you want to use to decorate those things. So I have with me, I have some acrylic paints and I also have some acrylic paint pens and we'll see what Jess has as well. So I'm going to pass it off to her because she's going to be leading us this week. Hi Jess. Hi Christiana. So thanks very much for the intro. Um, I am also in the land of acrylic paints. Um, trying to remember where I got my acrylic paint, probably somewhere at um, the local art store. It is just, uh, it might have been Playtime in Arlington, actually, since that's my one of my favorite art stores. But it's just a little, a little set of colors that's super washed out from that angle. How about there? Anyway, it's they're they're like ten milliliters tiny because i was like oh what's two ounces this is um this is like two ounces oh you have a very nice rock that is such a good rock isn't it great i literally looked out my window yesterday because i was gonna go get stuff for this yeah. and i saw this rock from inside and i was like that is my rock that is such a good rock i have a few neighbors who've been giving me a few rocks so like some of the ones that i've um like um spoiler alert decorating I've already decorated one but like this one that says compassion Aww. is so good and um but yeah I have some rocks I did a I I while I was waiting for this to start I did a little yin yang on on this one so that it would be dry before we got started and um I have neighbors next door who I had a whole bunch of oysters and I could see them like I you know we talk and it's like oh look at those oyster shells what you doing with those nothing can I paint them so um, I've got oyster shells and I even brought in from my basement um, you know uh, just a potting like crockery I guess that's not technically nature though and a naked it rock found. it I found it yeah I found it yeah. in my basement <laughs> so you found um you found that rock just outside of your door yeah right outside my apartment there's like a big clump of bushes nearby cool. and i found this really good stick too oh that is a good oh, stick geez. i have a very very small stick um i mean it's hard not to have sticks in one's yard I have a yard, um, if you have a yard, I should say. Um, and so I, I added a little white paint just so that I can have some contrast for funsies. Do you have a plan for your design? Not like super much. I am picking colors and putting them on. Yeah. I wanted to say something, I haven't decided what. It might okay. just say like, hello. Yeah, I think hello is a very friendly little thing to say. So some of the ones that I've already done, um, I mostly like to do colors. Uh, I just like to play with color more than anything and it doesn't have to bean or do anything, but this one has um, has real nice Ooh. swirly pattern on it. And it says sanity. And uh, my friend goes diving and so got me a whole bunch of scallop shells and so here's like the un unvarnished one and then on the inside has this really wild bright pattern I did that really fun. last month where do they go diving do they go diving locally or yeah they do um well wherever they can although you know obviously not right now um but yeah I requested 
last summer or the summer before, will you please bring me shells that I can decorate? And then they sat in my garden for this whole time. And then I realized I wanted to do a project like this. I don't know if I showed you this before, Christiana. No, that's very fine. So I took old scraps of wood and hot glued them together to make sort of like a background and then painted the shells and then glued them down. And uh, so I have a whole mess of these and they're, they are decorating my, my bedroom now. Uh, I like them. They would be really good bookends. Oh, you're right. They would. That would make a fabulous. All right, great. Now I have more ideas. Thank you. <laughs> but it doesn't have to be that fancy. I just like, I also have like this one that says live. I like swirlies. Swirl patterns are my favorite. I'm very excited because I feel like this will be fun. What I think I'm going to do with mine is I'm going to take them back out into yeah. the nature and then hide them somewhere. I think I will do that too with um, with most of them. Not my bookend. I'm not that nice as it turns out. <laughs> I have a limit to my nice. Have you ever used um, interference colors? I'm not sure. Um, interference, like this is, um, they look pretty much like, uh, like nothing in particular. They, they, they look mostly like white or pearlescent, but then when you put it on, it looks super dramatic. Let's see. I need to, I need to demonstrate that a little bit on the outside here. So if you put black down. I'm going to have to wait for a minute and show you in a sec, but interference colors just have this really cool pearlescent quality to them. Kind of adds to the, I don't know, cool sci-fi otherworldly qualities. How are your cats? They're doing good. I got to open up the window so they're not screaming at us this week oh that's that's good that's one of their favorite hobbies well i feel like cats screaming out in at their at their humans is sort of like a very fine pastime yeah for felines well and because this is right around it's like almost dinner time yeah so they like to come and say hi but i think they're successfully distracted by the great outdoors yeah, there's nothing quite like outdoor TV. Um, we have um, we have a an air conditioner like cage because our um, apartment is on the ground floor. There's a big cage that has to go on. There are cages on the windows, and then you have to have a cage for the air conditioner. Mm -hmm. But we don't really have an air conditioner, at least definitely not this early in the year. No. Um, so we can open up. So we put a blanket out on the air conditioner cage and they just like curl up like it's oh, a personal porch. And all of the people on the ground floor do that in our building. They all put their little blankets out and then you just see like lines of cats. <laughs> <laughs> I miss cats. I haven't had a cat since I... Moved out of my mama's house. Oh. Maybe someday. Mm. So right now I'm just adding a quick thin layer of purple to the inside of this oyster shell. Because I can. Because purple's, purple's my favorite color. Did you know that? <laughs> it matches your shirt. Exactly. Um. So now I, I, I was thinking of maybe doing something like balance for the um, for the yin yang. That seems like it's a on on theme thing. What other word could one put in if not balance? I'm thinking about. I don't even know. I 
him out of white. Good thing it's all right here. Did you? I am. I'm a. Uh, the word I'm looking for. Uh, an inattentive coworker, and I haven't been watching much of the of the of the current live streams yet. But thank goodness I can go look at them later. Have you talked about Bob Ross yet? I definitely feel a little bit like I'm trying to be Bob Ross. Yeah. Every week. I do not. I, and it makes me think about how impressive it is that Bob Ross was Bob Ross. Yeah. Because he would just do everything in like this one big long cake. And that's really cool. That is so hardcore. That's just such like, that is just sort of like, it is good. I mean, I think that one of the best words to describe Bob Ross is pure. And I did not appreciate him when he was creating at the time. But I do now. And that he did everything that he did was like just sort of your basic color set. Uh-huh. Which I never really realized until I went in and watched them and more of the videos and was like, wow, <laughs> like I always cheat. I feel like I'm cheating a little bit. I always get the uh, paints all pre-mixed for me. Oh. Like you have a lot with just kind of your basic sets. Yeah, I, I did. Um, I did a mostly basic set of all of the primaries and you know, like the like the rainbow colors and then all of the inter interference colors on principle because they're brand new. I just got them in the mail, I think, two days ago. And uh, I'm wondering if that's, I'm so impatient. I just want to show you like right now, like, will it work? So mm -hmm. I don't know if you, how well you can see that I've added blue to the edge of this current painting. Yeah. And so I'm adding, oh my God, that is so flipping cool. It's making it an entirely different shade of blue, which is a lot lighter. But um, when I put this under more direct sunlight, it's going to kind of have this really cool pearly color to it. So this is interference blue. And I have interference gold, which I'm going to put on top of the next to it. Let's see. Yeah, okay. I suspect that our cameras couldn't possibly show the detail that I want to show ever. You can take a, a photo later, though. Yeah. And you could post it. So you know, see your finish because that will usually pick up a little more than these. Only if I'm, I guess, patient, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I am so glad I picked out multiple things to do because I'm, I feel like a squirrel, like, oh, I could do this. Oh, I could do this. <laughs> How are you doing over there? I see light blue and white. Is that accurate or is my camera deceiving me? Um, it is like a sherbet pink and blue. Oh, hello. Oh, hello. Oh, hello. That's so good. Hello, friend. Hello, friend. I like the like funky colors against the natural surface is very fun. I like just, I don't know, I'm, I'm huge into like just the, hmm, like the subtle shifts between colors. So for example, like here's one that has a whole lot of gold on it, but the way that it kind of goes from dark blue, heck, even my nails, I, I did like galaxy style nails the other day and now they're all chipped the blue into the green into the gold i like 
I like how it smushes. Holographic. Just be like a striped stick. A striped stick? Striped stick. Cool. With fun different size stripes. I, I do not suffer from the, I need to have a plan before I start applying paint to a thing. How about you? Um, I definitely feel that way when I have like a more, I, I can, I can get that kind of decision paralysis when I have like a canvas or something. Oh, sure. Cause I feel like I'm going to ruin the canvas, which is not how I think I should be approaching things. <laughs> well, I, I feel like, uh, there's always, one can always cover it up usually. I mean, there's very few things that can't be covered up on a canvas, right? And also it is, even if you don't hang the canvas on the wall at the end, you still did the art. Yes. It's quite a thing to just be able to be Zen about it like Bob Ross. Yeah. And like, there's so many, like when you're a kid and you have all your special stickers, but then you never put your special stickers on anything. Yes, that was me. Yes. That's like just so save them. I still have a lot of stickers and I still get nervous. That's I've, what it's for. It's mm -hmm. to on things. Yeah, lately I've been going ahead and just using the stickers lately. Yeah. The 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 metaphor, it's not necessarily always a sticker, but I'm I'm going ahead and using my art projects and not thinking about, oh, I'm going to save this for later. I, I, I don't know enough Latin to modify carpe diem to seize the art. Mm, I don't know art in Latin. I did take Latin, but I don't remember. Okay. I just remembered to look up. It says from will to everyone remind us what kind of paints we're using right now. They are acrylic paints. We're both using acrylic paints. And do they have to be that kind of paint? Absolutely not. You could, well, I like acrylic paints best because they dry fast. They're non-toxic. And um, you probably have them. You probably have them. Like if you have paint. Probably. I mean, like oil paint would be another choice. And I have... I have to admit, I have never, ever, ever used oils, not once, in my many decades of arting. I don't think I have either. I think I use tempera. Yeah, which is cool. Yeah, and I feel like that just lacks the finesse. <laughs> I don't know. Tempera seems like temperamental. Yeah. Mental. Or at least it, it's it's not as flexible as I want my art to be. So so here I, I like doing like purples into oranges into yellows. And so that's what I'm doing. Okay, and then the next bit is let's see, have you always been into painting nature objects? Nah, um, well, have I ever, have I always been into painting nature objects? I feel like I've always been encouraged to be creative with how I do art. My background is that I grew up raised by artists. My mom is a visual artist and my father is uh, very creative and visually attentive to things, even if he doesn't describe himself as a fine artist. He's a great photographer and a great engineer. So making things has always really been important and a priority, even if I don't get paid for it. I don't know, Christ Christiana, do you think that, I mean, like, I feel like we work in a place where we're actually where where we can integrate our creative sides way more than I've ever worked in any other place. Yeah, um, definitely. I mean, I think that is why I feel like 
one of the reasons I wanted to be a librarian is because I couldn't decide, I couldn't pick one thing. And public librarians kind of don't have to pick one thing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I definitely all the things I am I'm very happy to be a generalist for the most part I love not having to choose to definitely. um and then what's that there was like a little bit more question there do you remember the first time you oh god no, like um do you remember the first time you painted theoretically nature objects and what did you paint um I definitely have no memory of my earliest painting because um I swear that when I was a child, I accidentally stuck part of a paintbrush up my nose and it stayed there. That's the kind of like, I have, I just art. I am art. I do art and happen to help people find things on the internet and in our library to when I get paid. My dad was very good at watercolors. Ooh. And we used to, and he used to try and teach me how to do watercolors. I never got like super great, but I did it a little bit. Do you have any really early memories of early projects? We used to sit, so we would go to Rhode Island and sit like on the shore and paint the boats. Oh, that's nice. It's very, yeah. So they're like so soothing. really cute photos of me and my dad sitting and watching the boats. Oh. And painting seagulls. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, so that's that where he learned too. His art, his um, watercolor teacher mm -hmm. was an artist in Rhode Island. Oh. He would go to Rhode Island for the summers and take watercolor classes there. Oh, watercolor is so delightful. It is. I really enjoy watercolor. That's another medium one could use under these circumstances. Um, I wouldn't in, in this. I mean, watercolor is great for paper. Have you ever used watercolor in anything other than paper? I don't think so. It would be tricky. It's such a the colors are so light. Yeah. You don't have a lot of the the pigment is not super dense. Yeah. So it would be tricky to get a real imprint, I would think. Yeah. And also I think it would wash off real easy if it, it got accidentally damp. Oh yeah, that too. <laughs> I mean, they are the um that's one of the things that I do like about acrylics is that they pretty much stay although I did bring in an example of one that totally lost its little mind this used to say calm and now it is entirely illegible but it's on a purple muscle shell and it's super fragile so I don't actually recommend mussels muscle shells but um I can recommend oysters and quahogs do I have a quahog yes I was just working on one I think this is a quahog. Either way, a uh, clam, regular old clam. I'm a fan of rocks too. This particular shell, Christiana, I got when I, um, over 10 years ago in, um, in Mexico. Oh. And I've had it ever since. And I was like, well, I should do something with this. And it sat in my garden and it sat in my basement. And now I'm just painting them. <laughs> hmm. The paint pens are very nice for this too, Ooh. if you have them. I do have a few paint pens, but I didn't bring them over to my workspace. So I will leave that for another activity, I guess. Oh, good. The, um, my yin yang has mostly dried, so I can probably write something soothing on the side of it. Uh, 
Hmm. Okay, now I'm having decision paralysis. What should I write? What should I paint on it? Moment of truth. Yeah. <laughs> Perhaps I will defer my decision here for a minute and like do it later. I'm just deciding to paint this part purple instead, Trala. The stick definitely is a little trickier. I think it needs more coats. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm I'm gonna work on my stick now that you mention it. I don't think I had I think I might see if my eight-year-old wants to turn this into another magic wand. We had such a good time, um, Dash and I, my eight-year-old, um, building with leftover pieces of wood and hot glue, and she just decided to build a set of drawers for a cardboard playhouse that she's using for her stuffed animals. So cute. She is the cutest. And it's not like she doesn't have like she has like official magic wand from Harry Potter world and then ones that she's made. So I was like what's one more wand? You never know when you need another magic wand. Yeah. So it's just a duel. So violent, so much dueling. Why, why, mm -hmm. wizards, do you have to fight all the time? I don't know. There's a lot going on. Yeah. I have to say, I've been really enjoying Rainbow Rowell's version of the wizarding world. It's so lovely. Yeah, for those of you who have not had the opportunity, the author Rainbow Rowell has written a few books. One of them is called Carry On. And it's about it, it was it was such a meta book, too. It was wild. So she wrote a, a book called Fangirl, in which the main character writes fan fiction. And then she wrote a book about the fan fiction from Fangirl. And I actually prefer the fan fiction to the original content, which I think is not unusual in this case, because it's just yeah. so good. I was, I was, fan, Fangirl was actually not my favorite. Yeah. Um, I mean, I liked of, it. Of her books. Mm. Um, and I, but I love, love Carry On and the sequel. And now we have to wait. Hopefully more. I haven't, <sighs> I haven't heard, heard yeah. tell what the status of that is. She came to, she did an event with the booksmith. Oh. Book. So I got to see her and she was awesome. There. I, uh, I figure I'm going to end this particular craft along with my hands entirely covered in paint. Yeah. I feel like I oh. would do it right if, if I do. <laughs> Let's see, we're about at 428. So if anybody has just shown up, we are doing painting, Christiana and Jess are doing painting of found objects. Christiana has a stick and a rock and I have a panoply of random stuff. I don't think I'm going to get to to this. This is like an entirely different project. The uh, the painting yeah, that of, seems like its own. But one could one could yeah. find this in one's stuff, or one could find this at a store and paint it. So, there was a random broken piece of brick, like a big brick. That was oh broken. yeah. I thought I almost grabbed that. Me too. I was like, yeah. And then I was like, nah. Maybe not. Maybe I'll go back and get it later. Right. That's how I kind of felt. Was I was like, hmm, I think on it because that feels like a commitment for some reason. <laughs> really? Okay. Well, um, I think I'm going to go with writing balance on the mm -hmm. the blue of this rock. And this is totally going into my neighborhood somewhere. I'm going to switch to a smaller brush, though. 
And I have mentioned before that I am the most impatient artist. <laughs> I hate waiting for paint to dry. So normally, <laughs> if I were doing this by myself, I would have a hair dryer next to me oh. so that I could blow dry my paint because that's literally, I, I can't. This that's is very difficult for me. I can relate to that deeply. I have found that if I take this, like, if if I wasn't worried about random dog barkings um, uh, and, like, equipment making loud noises, I would have taken this all outside and sat in the sun to do this. But I imagine the, the, the visual fidelity would be not so great. Um, then you don't have to worry as much about the uh, paint getting everywhere, too. There's that, and the sun dries the paint so fast. So let's see. I think because I picked these really fun neons, but they take a few more coats. Oh yeah, because they're more transparent, translucent. Yeah. I'm going to use orange on the blue because those are opposites, and will look. It'll really stand out. I hope, unless it gets muddy. One way to find out. But Do you could always put another coat of blue on top. I could put another coat of blue on top. I could highlight with white around, like, to kind of make it pop. Make it, yeah, exactly. Or I could just kind of embrace the fact that it's just a little bit muddy. Is there a type of art that you haven't had a chance to try yet that you want to do? Mm, that's a good question. I want to try punch needling really bad. Mm. That seems fun. Um, which is like a kind, it's kind of like a kind of embroidery if people haven't seen what that looks like before it like has you use this special um stretchy cloth called beaver's cloth and you use this little uh this needle that you kind of uh it feeds it feeds yarn directly into the needle and you punch oh. the needle through the fabric and then it grabs the yarn okay you can make little loops I can visualize that. If that, that kind of makes fun. sense. You can Google yeah. it. You know what I mean? But it makes, so you make like kind of a mosaic out of little yarn loops. That sounds lovely. So yeah. there's, there's my not dried balance. If we had sun, direct sun, it would dry very, very, very fast. That's pretty legible. Yeah, I think it's good. Is there a kind of art you would like to try, Jess? I have thrown um, ceramic pot once, Ooh, that's and I want to do that more. That, but I always find art that dries out my hands. <laughs> yeah, I I have picked crocheting back up mm -hmm. since um, the since we've been spending more time at home. And that has been a very good decision. I've been very happy about that because I was a very beginner crocheter before oh. and I feel a lot more comfortable. I feel like I could do like a much more complicated pattern if I wanted to now. Good for you. I have, so I don't know if, nope, my, uh, my, I'm not going to mess with my camera, but right off screen, I have my black singer sewing machine that my mother gave me that it used to be hers when she was a kid. And so I've been sewing with that. It turns out, did you know, Christiana, that if you don't have a sharp needle, you can't actually sew that well? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that happened. Um, but I feel better now because I have a sharp needle. My mother has a beautiful old sewing table in the basement that still has an old sewing machine in it. But I don't think it runs. Oh. It's like yeah. Cool. yeah, I've I've been sewing s kind of a lot, and I feel so much more comfortable with it now than I ever have in my entire life because I've been practicing. Yeah, I did my first like real like top stitching 
I mm-hmm. didn't know what that was. Can you moment. tell me what top stitching is? Because I've heard that word, but I don't necessarily know what that entails. So I have not looked up a definition, but my ge- my general understanding is that like when you buy something, so when you stitch two pieces of fabric together, you usually do it on the wrong side and then you flip it yeah. inside out. Yeah. Most clothing that you have also does like a nicer like a secondary stitch that's actually on the outside okay helps the fabric lay flat along that seam and like um p- kind of pins the seam allowance to okay. the inside so that all lies flat and it looks much more finished than if you don't do that um so like if you look at the like the inseam on your jeans you can oh, see that yeah. there's a little bit, of, a little line of thread that runs along that seam. Yeah. That you can actually see. And it's not necessary to hold the cloth together, but it just looks a lot nicer. Yeah. I usually hear that in reference to um, quilting. Mm. I think. Oh, I do want to try quilting. Yes. Oh, no, I don't. I, I'm going to leave that to the quilters. Oh, and... I kind of want to do it. Do it. Okay, you should do it. You should totally. Well, because I'm working on a giant crochet blanket, and then I could quilt. But I'm I'm nervous that I'm not precise enough. Mm, Well. But there's only one way to become more precise. (laughs) Just do it. That that's that you are correct. You are in fact exactly correct. All right. I'm wondering if I dare put some more interference colors on top of these colors that I just laid down. Very fun. I like those a lot. Um, Worst case scenario, add more color. Mm. I really need to just let it dry before I add this because I know I'm I'm at that point too where I have to wait. I don't wanna. Challenging. <laughs> I have to wait for everything else. Why should I wait for the paint? I'll just oh, I can switch. I, I think that my I don't know, I don't know what you would like my what would you call that? Um sort of a gradient. Yeah, like a sunset. Yeah. My sunset is mostly dried, although my blue did weird things. I don't know what happened right there. So I've got a good bit of purple on the outside, and then I've got a nice bit of phalo blue here, and then this weird washed out bit, and I don't know. I guess I overwatered it or something. (laughs) That's cool. I can live with it. Just (laughs) add more blue. Phalo blue is the best color of blue. I remember when we were ordering paints for the library, I was like, Jess will know which colors. <laughs> and I brought the catalog to you and I was like, there are eight blues. And you were like, this one. this one. Yes, I have very strong feelings about which ones are the correct one. I was like, I know Jess will have a strong opinion and it will probably be the right opinion. Why, so. thank you. No. <laughs> of course, now that I've added this blue so that it's all even, I can't do anything, but I could add color to the inside. I think I will. This might be a good opportunity to just put the the interference colors in because they'll it'll just make it all like shiny like and subtle. Probably too subtle. One of the ones that I did in advance is this one and I can see a nice purple sheen on in the sunlight and in the lamplight, but there's no way that a camera is going to pick that up. So just, we'll just trust you. Then. I guess y'all just have to trust me that there's a nice That'd purple sheen on this. It's like, it's beautiful. like a top layer of your, it is beautiful because nature made it. <sighs> Gosh, I miss people. I miss you, Christiana. 
I miss you, Jazz. I miss everybody. Mm -hmm. um, I miss, I miss answering the phone at the library. Me too. It is nice to get to chat with people. Yeah. If you all have not used our, we have a reference chat. We do. During our normal library hours. So from 10 to six every day during the week and on Saturdays. You can are humans waiting to talk, talk to, to a librarian. Like you there's like a little chat. thing that comes up on our website that says, do you want to talk to a librarian? They mean like literally a librarian sitting on the other end of the computer saying, please talk to me. Yeah, it's not, we have no, there's no robot. No robot. No robot. I've had multiple people ask me if I am a robot. I am not a robot. Be and I'm like, I'm not. I'm, I'm Promise. Really here. I will talk to you. We will try and find you. That missing book that yeah. you find that you remember. And if we can't find it, we will commiserate with you. Yes, we will. We will do our very best. Yeah, we will do our very best. We always try our very, very best. And I don't um what one might not know is that both Christiana and I are in the reference department. We could have like there's no reason why it couldn't have been somebody from youth services or circulation doing this just happens to be two reference people yeah. today. So I started this painting of the shell a little bit before we went live and I'm, one of the nice things that I like about this kind of project is that you can add layers. That is something that I had to learn because when I was my kid's age and a little bit, even twice that, like when I was a teenager, I was like, okay, I'm done. Woohoo. <laughs> and that would be the end of that. I was like, or you can put it down for a little while and do something else and come back and you might come up with a really cool idea. I like using shells particularly because um, the way that the acrylic absorbs into the shell itself is kind of variable. Like on this shell that was out on the beach for a real long time and there was no shininess to it at all. It was sort of like bone bleached, kind of creepy a little bit, but you can see that there's lots of like little pock marks that naturally happened. Um, and so it changes the texture of the paint and how it is seen and what you see here versus what you see way back here, of course, way different. And then you'll have another kind of shell like this one has um, purple and interference purple on top of it and it's still a little damp. So it's not gonna, it's, it's not ready to, if I put any paint on it now, it would just brush everything off and go back to the original shell color. Or you could use the other side and have an entirely different painting experience. One of the things that I like about going to visit the beach is that you pick up a wet shell and it looks so cool. And then when you bring it home, it starts to look kind of dry and less interesting. So sometimes if you add paint, it can recreate that wet, shiny experience. Like I don't know how much you can see of like just adding water changes the color of the shell. So I, I think I would want to keep um, a pattern that would show off the natural features of the shell's color because I can, but I don't have to. I can literally do anything I want because I'm the boss of me. Um, and sometimes I, I think, oh, well, I'll paint this. And I'm like, no, it's fine just the way it is. I think I'll leave this one alone. I'll just put it back. This was out in my garden from I don't know where. I just collect shells. And I'm, I'm deciding 
I'm finally pulling out my embossing powder. Ooh, I yes. It be a very fun project for that. Yeah. I mentioned it a few times that I have embossing powder. Show me. There's a gold, a glittery. Yes. Gold. How are you going to affix it? Is I it? I have a pen, a Versamarker pen that has uh -huh. this special, slightly sticky ink. Hmm. Ooh. So you can have glittery writing. So you can have glittery writing. <sighs> Nice. Or in this case, little like glitter stripes, I think. Yeah. So I'm going to do that. I think it will work on this. I have never done this, but I feel like it will probably work. Oh, yeah, it'll work. I believe in you. And if it doesn't work, well, we just have us and the internet. Nobody will know, right? No, they'll totally know, but they won't mind. They'll understand that we're just an experiment experimenting is so important what if, if you don't try you don't know so i'm going in and just putting oops i just got a bunch of pink paint on me <laughs> okay what, what? i'm putting little stripes of a special ink wherever i want the glitter to be And then I also have this very fun special bucket that is the best thing ever that is just a glitter bucket. Oh, wait, it's like a proper glitter bucket so you can just dump it all back in when you're done. Yeah, it has, it's like a funnel tray. <gasps> oh, that is brilliant. I need one of those. It's so good. It's so good. So you can do glitter or you can do beads little tiny mm -hmm. beads oh yeah yeah i and hate having to put away done, beads. you just take the little plug out of the side and you can just dump it all back in and you don't so lose good. it so i don't have to be like as shy with the glitter mm -hmm. the yeah that's good you don't want to be shy with the glitter i'm a, i'm just entranced waiting to see what happens mm -hmm. Tap it off, and wherever there was ink, there's now little glitters. Oh, nice! There. So you could put that over the color, and it would glitter up the color, or you can leave it on the natural wood. Yeah. Call it a day. And this isn't just. You could do this with regular glitter and glue, but this is actually embossing powder. So it's extra fancy. It's extra fancy. So once I'm done doing this, then I get to do the magic part. The magic part? The magic part. Have you seen uh, embossing guns, Jess? Um, you should tell me again, because I don't. I'm not sure I remember exactly how the magic works. So this powder is fancy. It comes in these tiny little tubs. It's a yeah. Little, a lot more expensive than regular glitter. It's not crazy, but it's a little more expensive. Um, and if you point a bunch of heat at it, it actually like melts. Oh, okay. That makes sense. The other glitter pieces and it becomes like a smooth, solid surface. Yeah. Okay. That's how that works. I've, I've certainly seen things that have been embossed, but that doesn't mean I understood how it happened. I figured it was, you know, magic. It is. I have this special thing called a heat gun that is just like a fancy hair dryer. It gets hotter than a hair dryer. Yeah, and you probably wouldn't want to put your hair under it. And it's really loud, so I'm going to mute my mic when I'm using it because okay. it's so ridiculously loud. And it just will like shift. It will melt all of it. And then it becomes way more permanent than glitter because glitter nice. like, falls off all the time. And once yeah. you boss it, it does not come off. It just melts like onto the object. That is cool. So I am going to mute it so you don't have to listen to a very loud sound. That's good. You should warn me when you start. Are you starting? Is that? Oh, yep. That's it. She's going. Cool. I have decided that since we we're just talking about magic, that what 
I'm going to write on the inside of this shell is something to do with magic. Magic is real or magic happens. I haven't decided yet. I, I have to decide very soon, though, because I would like to put this shell down. Or I can demonstrate wait and see and just write magic. And then, uh, oh, I don't know. I mean, I just added some interference color on the outside. And now you can actually see in this light that it is shiny. Ooh, and there is more shiny. It looks like it is embossed. The glitter is embossed. Hooray. And now it will be stuck on there and not just rub off on your hands. That is so cool. And it creates more of like a smooth. So it's still, it's a glitter embossing powder. So it still has a glittery effect. Mm -hmm. but it moves out so it almost looks like gold leaf that is so cool or a gold paint i have some gold paint because i've broken some crockery and painted it and glued it back together and then did the emphasizing the broken pieces Ooh, that might be another interesting craft along at some point although oh, yeah. maybe not at least the premise of it is very cool um i'm trying to remember what the word is in japanese um, yes, I know what you mean, and I don't know the word off the top of my head. Um, uh, I think it might be kitsunge or something very similar to that. My little sister studies Japanese, so she she'll has, tell you later. We well, can look it up on the internet. She just graduated college. Yeah. It's all grown up. Wow virtual graduation that's rough yeah but it's still exciting so then i can just use my little paintbrush to dust all of my glitter away then it can go back into the vessel and be used again. And not get as many places on my desk. It will still get some places on my desk. Okay. I went with magic happens. That's fine. Yeah. And then you'll, it'll be like, it'll be down like that somewhere. And then somebody will flip it over maybe. And it'll say magic happens. <gasps> I'll be like, it does. It just happened. Yeah. Wabi sabi. That's what it is. Will told us. That's one of the things. That's one of the the words. What makes it fancy? Um. Oh no, the the wabi sabi is one of the Japanese words. I did not. I don't think I've ever heard that one before. Oh, so maybe there's multiple words. There That's must be one multiple. of the words, because that means like the idea that something like is more beautiful when it's been mended. Yes, which I am totally embracing that premise a lot these days. Mm -hmm. There, I think I might be done with this one. I really like it. So good. And. There we've got, I think that one's done too. I don't, I didn't put anything on the bottom, but that's okay. Keeping it simple. It has balance on it. And it can go with my, oh, so one of the other ones that I did, I, I love doing themes sort of in a theme. So here we have like the one that I just did. And this is the one that I did um, last week. So it has, um, it's also shiny and has some interference purple on the top and then black and blue and gold on the inside. It says peace. So. And I have my stripey stick. Stripey stick. Stripey stick. This would be fun to do like a bunch of stripey sticks and then put them in a base or something. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Maybe like some polka dots. I would put polka dots on there too. 
that'll be good. Or you can have a polka dot stick and a stripy stick. Yeah, and all within a, a color theme. Yeah, I like that. It would also be really fun to then use this as like your wall, like if you wrote. Oh yeah, like you can. And then you have fun painted things on top. Well, we could, um, if one had the capacity to drill holes in shells, you could use that for like the um, anchoring point and then have Ooh. these and use maybe some leftover yarn that you might have to make a quasi wind charm or just wall art. That would be really fun. And then here is my oh hello. Oh hello. Oh hello. Hello. Pet rock. Oh, finally. Nope. So one of the, the downsides of using um, acrylic is that if you don't have a very thick layer it will in fact brush Ooh. right off especially if it's not totally dry <laughs> like if it's dry it's one thing i've um when i was when i was a grunge kid in the 1990s i painted my leather jacket with acrylic and it worked great so, and it's still on there i still have it i just don't wear it very much it's, it's very kind sturdy of, and it's like it one of the least expensive paints, which is... Yeah, I feel like it's very undervalued. Yeah, it's very nice. Um, we are almost all done. We are almost out of which all is done. wild. I know, the fastest... Well, I mean, I've been looking forward to this, like, for days, so I'm... Of course, it went fast. Thank you for joining us, Jess. It was well, very fun. I am so glad that I could participate. It's nice hanging out with you. This is like the longest I've gotten to hang out with anybody in a while. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know what I'm going to do with my old paint that I have so much of? What are you going to do with it? I'm going to take it down to the worn out uh, wooden bench that I have outside and like yeah. all of like almost all of the um, all of the the finish came off of it. And so I'm going to I'm just going to take all of this paint and apply it to the wood that sounds fun i like it that's the biggest found object yeah that is in fact the biggest found object is a wooden bench but yeah. let's roll with it <laughs> thank you all so much uh for joining us again this week so um, next week we will be doing another project the same time at 4 p.m we'll be doing um oh no now i've forgotten what we're doing next it was week. the envelopes yes the envelopes we'll be doing we'll be making our own envelopes out of whatever paper products you have around the house and it's a good time to send a letter right now so we'll be making envelopes that you can send in the mail um you can put a stamp on them and send them to someone who maybe you can't go see in person right now. It'll be really fun and we'll be decorating those. So I'm very excited. Um, Yay. Thank you again, Jess, for joining Thanks, me. Christy. Uh, talk to you on the internet. Yeah. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. -bye. Bye.